What's going on guys? John Haas, RN with NRSNG here, and I wanted to show you guys our brand new scrub sheets. These are 56 clinical reference sheets that are laminated, they're durable plastic, color-coded, you can carry them with you, you can bring them with you to clinical, and they fit right inside your pockets. That's why I call them scrub sheets, because they fit right inside your scrubs. 56 clinical nursing reference sheets. When you go in them, we even send you with this nice little ring, we send you with this nice little box, and you get an NRSNG sticker too, so you can store them, keep them for later, or you can just bring them with you to clinical, and this ring is, you can open it and take just the ones you need. If you're studying OBPs or studying mental health, you can take just the cards that you need with you. But let me walk you through them. You can see they're very durable, and you can actually use a dry erase marker and write on them and erase and everything as well. They're really pretty too. I really, really like them. So I'm really excited to show you. On this first page here, we've given you a table of contents, cardiac, respiratory, neuro, labs, pharmacology, OBPEDS, fundamentals, and then we also have this QR code here. I know a lot of people don't use QR codes, so we even gave you the URL where you can go and you can watch these videos. What we've done is we have, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly, it's something like 30 or 40 additional premium videos that talk through some of the cards. And what we've done on this uh, table of contents, we've actually shown you which cards have a video and you can see nearly every single card has a premium video where I'm walking you through on a whiteboard or telling you exactly uh, you know, what, what, what additional information you could learn about these different sheets. So here in our cardiac section, you can see cardiac is all red, help you see cardiac, respiratory is blue, and then we have all of our other colors. But first one, we have our, our five lead EKG placement and heart sounds to help you remember where to place the EKG, where you're gonna be hearing different heart sounds. And then we have our cardiac blood flow one, helps you keep straight. Uh, kind of the blood flow through the heart. And then we have this heart murmur chart. This heart murmur chart for me was game changing once I, I realized how to identify and how to uh, assess a different murmur. So antihypertensive and BP ranges, we've got your ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, side effects, and, and then uh, blood pressure normal ranges. Then we have our cardiac labs and meds. These are some of the most common cardiac labs you're gonna see and what changes you're gonna see on the EKG. Then we have our common cardiac meds and uh, some of the most common meds you're gonna see with your cardiac patients. We have our EKG and hemodynamic values, your cardiac output, cardiac index, CVP, stroke volume, all the different cardiac uh, lab values and hemodynamic values you need to know. Then we have this really amazing, uh, and really amazing hemodynamics chart. I love this chart. What it does, it shows you how cardiac output, blood pressure, heart rate, stroke volume, preload, contractility, afterload, how they all play together and what we would do, what interventions we would use for a patient who might be uh, experiencing an alteration in one of those. Then we have our 10 common uh, heart rhythms. This one's really cool. These are the 10 most common rhythms you're gonna see. Normal sinus, sinus braid attack, uh, AFib, A flutter, sinus attack, PVCs, uh, PACs, VTAC, and VFib. And you can actually see right there on the chart, we show you what that rhythm is gonna look like. Then we have 12 lead MIs with, with, uh, with different care, different uh, ways you're gonna see them and the care you would give. What's really cool is we've taken a 12 lead right here and we've shown you what, uh, which ones kind of go together with finding a uh, different MI. Then we have our cardiac biomarkers, myoglobin, CKMB, triple one LDH, uh, and it shows you what the alteration would be and how long it takes for it to peak, rise, and return to normal. Then we have our acute coronary syndromes with this really beautiful chart of what you're gonna see uh, for those alterations in a patient, acute coronary syndromes, right, uh, right side, uh, left side heart failure. And then we have our lung sounds. And it even shows you kind of what the respirations are gonna look like, where you're gonna find them. Then this hierarchy of O2 delivery. Uh, this is one of the first cheat sheets I ever made and it's uh, one of the most helpful for me. I made it for myself when I began working on the ICU because I was trying to figure out, okay, when am I gonna put my patient on a Vinny mask? When am I gonna put them on BiPAP? When am I gonna put them on CPAP? And what's the difference there? We've actually uh, outlined that all for you. Uh, then we have our COPD chart, levels of consciousness, mental status. I was an ICU, uh, neuro ICU nurse for uh, several years. So I needed uh, a nice cheat sheet, nice chart to help me really identify the difference between stuporous and obtunded. Okay, how would I say if a patient's stuporous? How would I say when they're obtunded? How would I say if they're somnolent? Those are all different uh, neuro or levels of consciousness. So I wanted to put those there. Then we have our anatomy of the brain, what you're gonna see with the anatomy of the brain, the different ventricles, and then the blood flow through the, uh, through the brain. And then that leads right into our neurological assessment. This is how you would assess a patient. Here's our GCS, here's our pupil sizes. And then we have part of the NIH National Institute of Health stroke scale. 
This is really helpful with your patients. We've put some of that in there for you. Then we have types of seizures, what you're gonna see with different seizure patients and what uh, they might be experiencing. Then again, we have uh, the different types of, of um, things that you're gonna experience, your patient will experience with blood flow uh, through the brain. Then we have common lab values. So now we're in our lab section, so we have some of our common values um, and what the, what the ranges are for that. And again, common lab values. Then we get into these lab value skeletons. I was always jealous. I had this one friend in nursing school who, who, who knew what these uh, skeletons did and he could write them out. And so I'd always look on his uh, nursing report sheets and he'd have all these lab value skeletons written out. I never could figure them out. So we made a chart for that so you know what goes in these different skeletons. That's how a lot of physicians and residents and stuff are gonna write their labs. Uh, then we have our ABG Rome chart. This is just really kind of a sequential chart to follow. If pH is high, I go over here. If pH is low, I go over here. And it kind of helps you identify what uh, respirator or what ABG your, your patient might be experiencing. Then our ABG tic-tac-toe. It's a really cool method. We have a video on it to help you figure out how to use it. Uh, then we have our order of lab value draws. This will be different based on different institutions, um, but this shows you based on what lab value my patient has and the different color tubes I'm using, which one should I draw first, which one should I draw last, because that really does matter. Then we have a blood transfusion chart, what you would see in your patient experiencing different tr uh, blood transfusions and what blood can go with what other types. Now we're, now we're into our pharmacology section. This is one of our biggest sections. We got different IV solutions in here. We've got uh, medication prefixes, suffixes. There's a ton of them. So we put them in here to help you kind of keep them straight. We got, uh, let's see how many pages. We have several pages on that. We have about four pages on that. Then we have common ICU drips and some different uh, information you need if you're working in the ICU. You can see this, this chart's a little bit more packed because there's a lot of pharmacology considerations in the ICU. <laughs> then we have different medications and their antidote. If you give a patient, or if a patient overdoses on this, what's the antidote? If you give a patient too much of that, what's the antidote for that? And then we have an insulin chart. Everything about insulin, everything about DKA, HHNS. Then we got our farm math equations, keep you straight there, different injection sites, and therapeutic drug, le drug levels. These are important to know because if you have a patient who is taking, for example, phenobarbital, what's the drug level we want in their body? We're gonna draw these trough and these, these different levels on our patient. What's the right values we want for that? Now we're in OBPs, we've got our immunization schedules, we got our pediatric burn chart, we got fetal circulation, one of the most confusing things in nursing school. So this will help you keep that straight. Um, then we have our newborn assessment. So you're, let's say you're on your OBPs rotation, you need to know what you need to assess on your patient. Here you have it right here. Then we have our APGAR scoring chart where you can write in your values. Again, with like a dry erase, pediatric vital signs. This is gonna be massively helpful for you if you work OBPs or if you are going through your OBPs rotation uh, to keep all that straight. And then we have pediatric, some dosage stuff, some pharmacology stuff for peds. Medical Spanish, now we're in kind of like our fundamentals and our extra cards. So we have Medical Spanish. This will help you just kind of communicate a little bit with a, with a Spanish-speaking patient. We have a couple cards of Medical Spanish. Then we have some mnemonics. You can see we have two pages of mnemonics in here to kind of just keep some of the basics uh, in your mind, remembering those things. Then we have some IV therapy. Now, why would you use a 14 gauge versus a 20 gauge on a patient? What would be the difference there? Uh, and that kind of helps you keep that straight. Then this is one of my charts that I really like. It's uh, called the invasive line chart. So if you say, hear someone say they have a pick line versus a dialysis shunt versus a femoral line, what, where would that be? Like if you get a report and like they have a pick, it's insert on the right, you know, where would you go and assess that? How would you assess that? And what would be some of the uses for that? Then we have our therapeutic diet chart. What's the difference between mechanical diet versus pureed diet versus high re residue diet? Um, how would you know what you can feed your patient, what they can have? Then we have some ACLS guidelines, and on the back of that, ACLS guidelines, additional information. Then we have this comprehensive health assessment chart, and on the very back, we have some essential phone numbers and ways for you to get in touch with us and ways for you to communicate with us. Guys, this scrub sheets uh, is one of the most helpful clinical tools you're gonna have. You can see it's just packed with a ton of information, uh, and those videos are gonna be additional help, and they fit in your pocket, and you can take them with you, and you can study and you can have the information you need right there on clinical. A lot of times you can't have your phone with you. A lot of times you can't get on a computer. So you can have it all right here in Scrub Cheats by NRSNG. Guys, head over to scrubcheats.com and you can check them out.